what I'd like us to do, before we get to this new concept that I'm going to show you, um, I want us to look at all these kinds of equations that you now know how to solve. You've come a long way. Now, if we go back to our metaphor, it's a little bit like you now know how to deal with all different kinds of pieces defending the king. Right? You can get all of these guys out of the way. I'm going to show you a new specific kind, but it kind of flows naturally out of the ones you already know. Let's think about what kinds of equations you could write. For instance, this one up here, right? k plus 6. What's the piece... Going with my metaphor here, right? What's the piece that's defending the king? What's keeping us from just having k by itself? Yeah. Six. It's just that plus 6, right? There's a plus 6 there. Uh, it could be a minus 6 or something like that, right? So we can add or subtract a number, and that's like a defender. Right? Have a look at the next one, right? What have we added on to here? What extra kind of piece is there on the left-hand side? Yep. Like yeah, what's the 4 doing? Can someone help? Because that's the right number, but what is the 4 doing? doing to the, yeah, it's multiplication, isn't it, right? Uh, I could have 4 times p, I could have p divided by 4, right? So I've got addition and subtraction. I've got multiplication and division of numbers as well, okay? When you have a look at number 3, right, what's going on here? What's different to uh, has indicated our situation here? Hmm, think carefully. How much you, yeah, I mean, uh, Letters over here. I have some here as well. I guess a way I could say this is, uh, in fact, you may like to go back to your original question and add this on so you can have some language for describing what's happening. Here, we're adding and we're subtracting numbers, right? That's what plus 6 is. We're multiplying and dividing by numbers, right? Do you see that? Like there's 4 out the front, which is multiplication. And then for this one, what we're doing is we're adding or subtracting, not numbers, but pronumerals, right? Like more X's or more R's or K's or whatever, okay? So I'm going to write pronumerals here. All right, now, I just want you to carefully look at what we've just established, right? I know I've got brackets there, but I'm not going to worry about him for now. You can add, subtract numbers. You can multiply, divide numbers. You can add, subtract pronumerals. If you were trying to complete the pattern, What's the next step? What's missing from this list? What looks like it should be the next thing? Yeah, Nathan. Times and divide pronumerals. Multiplying and dividing, but not by numbers, by pronumerals. Okay? What would happen to equations, right? An equation if, for instance, and this is what you can write under your new heading. If I had, let's go with the letter like say, um, let's go with the letter S. If I had S, and instead of adding or subtracting a pronumeral, what if I multiplied? by a plurinumeral, okay? Now, I want to make an equation. I'm trying to deal with equations here, right? So just as an example, I want to pick out the number 16, because I like the number 16, sweet 16, okay? Now, this is our example. So I'll just write example at the front. We have some language. We already developed some language earlier this year to write this in a more concise form. Do you remember what language we used? Started with an I. Index, Index form, right? Very good. So S times S. I'm multiplying s by itself twice, so I write s squared. squared. Okay, right, now, Adam, yes? Okay, so we'll get to the names in a second. Let's just worry about what it is, but yes, okay. When you have a look at this equation, right, this is a bit strange because you know how before we said... Before we said, the goal was to get the pronumeral science how to do this. The pronumeral kind of looks like it's already by itself, right? Almost, right? There's just this two hanging around. So I'm going to do this thing to solve it, okay? Now, before I jump to suggestions, I just want you to remember, we've been saying it over and over again. I hope you're a bit sick of it, really. Is that the reason why R equals 21 is a solution. And the reason why equals 1 is a solution. And people equals minus six and a half, and on and on and on. The reason why they are solutions is because you can put those numbers where? Where can I put them? Yeah, back into what I started with, right? I could put r equals 21 in here, and it should work. I can put x equals 1 in here. So I want to think of what number can I put in here for s 
that would work with this. And it's not to think of, right? Daniel, what would you put in there? I would put in four. I would put in four. In fact, underneath here, let's just write that down, right? If you've got another color, that'd be helpful. Four squared does equal 16. I could pop it in and it works. So S equals four, see that? S equals four is a solution, okay? That's great. But there's something a bit sneaky going on here, right? Unlike every other question we've been doing, where when you solve it, there's a solution, one solution. There's actually another number that I can put in, I can substitute it, I can swap it out for S, and it will still work. It will still be a solution. Can anyone think of another number that I can square and it'll give me 16? Will? If I take negative 4, right, and if I square it, right, when you square a negative number, let's just write this out, that's minus 4 times minus 4, right? What happens to those negatives? They become positive. They cancel each other out, leaving you with 16, right? So since minus 4 squared also equals 16, it also works for this equation, right? S can be both of these. It can be two values. It can be one or the other, right? So I've got this guy here and this guy here. So the way I write this, being that one is positive four and one is minus four, I would say, I've run out of space. I would usually put this underneath. You guys can put it underneath. I would write S equals, we have a symbol for this because it happens so often, plus or minus four. Okay, you might have seen this before actually. I literally read this as S equals plus or minus four. It's kind of like a shorthand to say two numbers at the same time, uh, but cramming it into the one spot. Okay, so for instance, if I gave you another one, if I said, this is example two, how about uh, X squared? Oh, how about it? Okay, now every time you see this square thing happening, because of what you notice down here, there's not just one solution. There are two. What's the root of 100? What number is it? Yeah. It's 10. It's going to be the solution to this is plus or minus 10. And the root is put either of those numbers in here, and it works. Yes? Is it true that there are no square roots for negative numbers? We'll get onto that. We will. It takes time to get to that, but let's just contemplate for a second. Let's do example three. And it's worth writing this down for everyone because it's a question you will get asked. If I said, well, how I don't know, like minus 25. Okay, minus 25. Now, if I start thinking about all the numbers that I know about, right? Can you give me some examples of what families of numbers do I know about? I'll give you an example first. One, two, three. What would you call those numbers? They're the numbers that are a couple of names. The fancy name is the natural numbers. These numbers come from counting, like one, two, three. So we call them the counting numbers, right? Can you take any one of these numbers and square it to get minus 25? Okay, now if I try, for example, not a counting number, but an integer, they've got negatives, right? I run into a problem because this will happen, right? The negatives will cancel each other out. I will never get minus 25. Um, even if I try like weird numbers, like say the, um, the rational numbers, the, four, the fractions, like that. You could even try weirdo numbers like the square roots, like this, right? None of these kinds of numbers will ever fit this kind of equation, okay? So therefore, what I write under here, and so should you, is I would say no real solution. Okay, now you might ask, well, why, why is it that I say real? Like, why don't I just say no solutions? And the answer is, there are solutions, but they aren't what we call real. And we will learn about those in the future. They're big, exciting, different kind of maths. Just like every time you learn about a different kind of number, it lets you do new kinds of stuff. And that's the same thing with this, but that's a bit of a spoiler. Okay, yeah. Um, couldn't you have one? 
negative one and it's yeah. positive because then it's... Okay, you could, but then that wouldn't be squaring, would it? Oh, yeah. Because by definition, yeah, yeah. squaring means take the same number, the same number. Maybe it's 4, or maybe it's negative 4, or maybe it's 10. But you've got to do the same number twice. So otherwise it wouldn't be squaring. Yeah. Ethan? That wouldn't apply to you. Ah, oh, that is a great question. That's not what we're looking at today. Let me just answer that question after I give us a heading for this. See all of these equations? See how they've all got squared in them, right? These kinds of equations are called quad. The reason they're called quadratic equations, when you square something, um, how many sides does a square have? Four. It's got four, like a quadrangle, right? Like when people say quadrangle, like if a school has a quadrangle, maybe your primary school had a quadrangle. We call that a quadrangle. Squaring and quadrangle, four angled things, they have this. Thing. So that's why we call these quadratic equations.